Today we've got a crazy story of revenge on someone's fiance. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, my cheating husband and partner of three years got what he deserved. I found out that my husband was cheating on me in the worst way possible and it was one of the most horrible moments of my life. While I was at the salon trying to figure out exactly what beauty journey I was going to embark on, seeing as it had been a while since I'd done anything for myself, I overheard the next customer that was being attended to complain about her supposed man who had been in her life for more than three years, and also how things were a bit rough between the both of them at the time. She was also complaining a lot about how much he had been lacking in the attention region of recent, and also what she decided to do, since he had sought it fit to neglect her the way he did, and she was thinking of what exactly she was going to do to get back at him. The story got me hooked, as I was really anxious to hear that more she had to say about this partner of hers, only for her to continue with the fact that he was already married, and they were both expressing how they truly felt pity for his wife, as they knew that she had not the faintest idea as to what her husband was engaging in. They also made mention of how traditional his wife was, and how they knew for a fact that he was apparently unhappy in his marriage, which was what led him to take measures that would allow for him to be able to go outside of his marriage and all. While they were saying all of this, the kind of way I was feeling was indescribable. I was feeling so bad for the person they were talking about, as I was beginning to feel like I was the one, because at some point, they were practically describing things about myself that even I had never once thought of. And then when they made mention of the man's name, this was when my mind truly sunk. I was in a daze. It felt unreal. I couldn't even believe it at first until I heard them make mention of his name over and over again. So as to not jump to inconclusive endings, I decided to ask them, making it almost seem like salon gist. And then this was when they even decided to give me the tea on what they were really talking about. And they even showed me a picture which further confirmed my suspicions. This was the time I decided that I was going to make him pay, as I'd already heard firsthand all the things that he had been doing behind my back through the entire time of our marriage and all, and I decided to do it in no other way than the exact way he did to me. My husband and I weren't dating for quite a long time as we had both met each other when we were both freshmen in college. This was two years before we had both decided to get into a relationship with each other. He was much older than I was, and this made me fall all the more for him when I first came across him at the admissions office, as this was what prompted our first conversation. He was meant to have made himself present at the office a week prior to his arrival on campus, but he didn't, and then he was issued an ultimatum where he was to either report to the admissions office to validate his studentship or forfeit it, to which he responded to immediately at the time. And this just so happens to be the exact time that I was just getting on campus, and our paths crossed while we were both waiting to be attended to. He introduced himself to me, and I responded in the exact same way. He tried to make small conversation before either of us was called inside and when he got called first, he said he was going to be back as he wanted to continue the little conversation we were just having and all. It wasn't like I had a choice in the matter anyways. I hadn't done what it was that I want to do there and so there was no way that I was going to leave there without doing so. And so I waited there, patiently, until it was my turn. And after it finally was, I went in, did every single thing I was supposed to do, and I was officially a student. When I came outside, to my greatest surprise, there he was, still waiting for me. I never thought he was this serious about really continuing our conversation, but this really changed my mind and all. And I must say, I was really impressed. Not like it took much to impress me anyways, but then at that moment it felt really nice. And so I chose to be quite receptive, just as a means to show my interest. Anyways, after the events of that very day, we had exchanged contact information and we'd continued our conversation on other platforms. And I got to find out a lot about the school from him, which was okay on its own. But then this was just the beginning, as I soon found out some things from and about him, which only sought to pique my interest in him more. Moving on, right when we both were in our third year in college, this was when things between the both of us were already beginning to take proper and recognizable shape and effect. As at this time, we both were already closer to each other than tight-knit friends would be. We basically knew everything there was to know about the other person, and this was just scratching the surface, as we spent quite a large majority of the day with each other, sometimes even more than we did in classes. And mind you, this was before we had even dictated what we were to each other, as along the line, we both soon realized that there were intense feelings brewing between the both of us. And although initially we both tried to deny said feelings, 
we soon came to terms with the fact that there truly was something special between the both of us, and sooner rather than later, we'd already gotten into a proper relationship. One that so happened to be my first relationship and his second serious relationship, it was really a blissful moment, as I was initially preparing myself for the moment our honeymoon phase would expire, but then, to my greatest surprise, it never did as I was truly feeling like this was going to be it. I felt like I had found the one for me, and I guess he also felt the same way, or so I thought. Fast forward just a little bit to the time after we were both done with college and had secured well-paying jobs for ourselves, where we would be able to earn a pretty decent living for ourselves and all. The idea of getting married was already beginning to get chipped in here and there between conversations, as we were both living together with each other right after graduating from college. And I guess you could say these kinds of conversations were, albeit inevitable, as both friend and family alike were already beginning to wonder when exactly he was going to tie the knot. And so it was, to be honest, as there was not the faintest shred of doubt in my mind as to whether or not I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him or not. Thankfully, he didn't take as much time as I thought he would, as sooner rather than later, he soon proposed, on the very day that was meant to be the day of our relationship anniversary which to me was by far the sweetest and kindest thing he had ever done for me. It was truly a special moment for me, almost magical if you will, as I kept wondering how I got so lucky in that moment. We weren't drawn back by any financial constraints at the time, so having our wedding at the earliest convenience was something that was certainly possible. And just like that, within the planning span of six months, we'd already gotten our vows taken, and we were officially partners in holy matrimony for the rest of our lives. I know this seemed like a happy ending story, but this was only the beginning of where everything started going wrong. As when we got married, a few months after, this was when I truly got to realize the type of man I had gotten married to, and I knew right then and there that this was by far the biggest mistake of my life. A few months after getting married, I wouldn't say he changed, but then there were certain behaviors that he had begun exhibiting. Behaviors that were never there in the entire time I'd known him. He was being secretive with his devices around me, which didn't tip me off at the time, but then he soon started the late nights, which he defended himself by saying he was kept out that long by work. I honestly had no defense whatsoever, and it even got to an extent where I was beginning to wonder whether it was just all in my head, and I even tried to be the best possible wife that I could. I went as far as quitting my job just to stay at home after he vehemently suggested and argued that there was no longer a need for me to keep on working, as he was already making enough for the both of us, and the family we were going to have with each other, and I became a full-time housewife all for him. However, the case was still the same. I tried all I could over the course of three years of being married and still nothing. And on the very day where I thought of one last resort just to see if I could entice and be as attractive as I was, on the very first day he saw me, I decided to head to the salon for the first time in quite a long time. And this was when I met the lady who apparently, according to her conversations with her friend, was my husband's mistress. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This just seemed to all be a farce at first, but as she even brought out photo evidence for me, as I tried to show interest in what she was talking about, my whole world crumbled. Everything I'd been keeping at the back of my mind all these years was already beginning to make perfect sense. Suddenly it was already seeming like all my suspicions were true. I knew not what to do at the time, as I was already considering leaving him. But when I found out that he wasn't in the least bothered about myself, along with our two-year-old daughter, and all he cared about was the mistress of his, or probably another mistress, as according to the mistress at the salon, he apparently had not been giving her enough attention, and neither was he for me, so I guess the only logical reasoning behind this was the fact that there was another mistress. I was not having that in my life, and although I weighed the effects it would have on my daughter, I strongly pushed for a divorce at the earliest time possible. And this came as a shock to him, but after letting him understand that I was fully aware of his shenanigans, he was suddenly muted for a moment, and he began begging. I guess he knew that following the route I was planning on following, he would practically be left with nothing. But this didn't move me, not even in the slightest. Anyway, I got a lawyer to finalize our divorce, as I was prepared to take everything he owned for the years of my life wasted in this farce of a marriage. 
and I made sure that when I was done with him, he would have quite literally nothing more to his name, for one, and he would also lose everything he apparently cared about, which were myself, his daughter, his properties, his job, and his mistresses. This was my last ditch effort at gaining some stand in my life as an independent woman and mother. I never set my sights on him again after that court day. I'm not saying everybody's going to have a moment like this in their lives, but isn't it crazy how almost it's like lightning striking in the same spot twice, where there can be such a perfect moment of two people being in the same place with a certain conversation going that just immediately unravel the other person's entire world like that? I can only imagine it would be enough to keep you up at night thinking about what if you didn't go to the salon to try to impress your husband and hear this thing firsthand from her. Like, how much longer would OP have actually put up with it? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of revenge, it would be amazing if you left a like or left a review if you're listening to my podcast. That said, our next story is, my ex-boyfriend was a scammer who targeted me as his next victim. I always thought I was smart and careful with people I let into my life, but it turns out one can never be too careful, especially when people hide who they truly are. I, 27-year-old female, lived in New York but schooled at LA. I've always been very cautious about the people I let into my life, from my friends to boyfriends, so nothing prepared me for the experience I had with my ex-boyfriend Malcolm. I went to UCLA and was a financial accounting major while Malcolm was in the computer science department. I'd seen him a couple of times in college but never spoken to him. We officially met during his job interview. He applied for a tech position at a company and was there for his interview while I was waiting for a close friend of mine, Agnes. Agnes and I weren't colleagues, far from it. I worked at a bank across the street as an accountant in New York City, while Agnes was one of those tech girls who was book smart and tenacious at her job. I was surprised to see Malcolm at the reception waiting to be called in for his interview. I could tell that he was nervous and decided to sit with him and talk. Maybe that would calm his nerves. After all, I'd also had a similar experience with my job interview and knew how nerve-wracking these things were. We got to talking. One thing led to another and we exchanged numbers. I called him the next day to ask how his interview went and he said he wasn't sure about the outcome. I tried to encourage him, but he suggested we meet up for coffee as his way of thanking me. We began hanging out regularly, and this was how I got to see the real Malcolm, or at least that was what I thought. Malcolm hung out with jocks and basketball players in college, so I assumed he was the confident type. But he was just a shy guy with an outgoing personality, which made him cute. I developed an interest and asked him out not too long after finding out that he got the job and we began dating from there. Agnes, I, and Malcolm became the perfect trio. We regularly went out for lunch breaks. During one of the lunch breaks, while Malcolm had gone to the bathroom, I asked for Agnes's opinion about Malcolm and if there was any behavior he exhibited at work that was contrary to his attitude with me, and Agnes didn't have any complaints. Like I said, I was the careful type. About three months into dating Malcolm, I noticed he was always busy during the weekends. I would always have something planned out and next minute he's cancelling on me. It made me suspicious of him. Different thoughts kept invading my head like, was he married or was there someone else? I decided I'd had enough of his excuses one weekend and made a surprise visit to his apartment. I had never been to his apartment but he had been to mine, which was even more disturbing. He lived in a studio-ish setting. A bed was at the corner and a sofa. The apartment looked kind of empty to be honest, like he had just moved in, but that wasn't my major concern. My major concern was the fact that he had two friends over and they looked like they were playing video games, and that pissed me off. Was this why he'd been cancelling my plans? I stormed out of the apartment, but he came after me and explained to me that it wasn't what it meant. So, according to him, he and his friends were working on a video game that had the potential of blowing up and they were just testing out the settings. He even showed me the whole concept and all and nothing looked suspicious. I believed him and after a long day, his friends decided to leave. I asked Malcolm why his apartment looked so empty and he said it was because he just moved to the city and was trying to settle in but was broke at the moment. I decided to do something nice for my boyfriend because who wouldn't and got him a set of furniture to give the room a little life. We had a routine of meeting during lunch break with Agnes of course during the week while I go to his apartment during the weekends and that was fine by me. Six months into our relationship, Malcolm comes to tell me he had a major investor who's interested in his video game and would like to talk about it in person so he would be traveling to meet the investor. 
I was so happy for him because I saw how much energy he always put into his work. He was booked in a business class seat which was sponsored by this investor, so I was very optimistic about the whole thing. Malcolm took time off work and went for his trip, and a trip which initially was meant to be a week, but it turned into a month. When Malcolm got back from his business trip, he explained to me that the deal went smoothly, although there were some bumps along the road which made him extend his trip. The investor was all in. I began to notice some changes in Malcolm. Gone was the shy guy who could hardly finish a sentence. He had a more cocky vibe to him and was more confident. I guess that's what happens when you begin to make enough money. Soon, Malcolm started hinting at the idea of us moving in together, which would have been nice if we'd both been together for more than a year. Things were moving too fast for me. Malcolm decided to get a house, which was surprising. I knew he must have gotten paid enormously, but I wasn't expecting him to get a house. An apartment, maybe, but a house was too much at the time. I told him about my concerns, which he countered by saying he wanted to plan his life ahead, so as not to worry about such trivial things in the future. His explanation made sense, so I supported his decision fully. Malcolm got the house in a car and furnished the whole house. It was a lot of money, but with the way he talked, it sounded as though he'd been paid a lot by the investor. I didn't want to look nosy, so I never bothered to ask. He began to talk about us moving in together. I brushed it off as an unserious topic the first time he brought it up, but Malcolm wasn't taking the hint. He kept telling me he was ready for the next step, and he was financially capable of taking care of us, so why was I being stubborn? I brought up the matter to Agnes, who was shocked to hear my response. She told me to go for it since Malcolm was a good guy and these are the two things a woman could ever wish for. A stable life with a serious partner, which got me thinking, she was right. Why sabotage a good relationship? I moved in with Malcolm and it was nice. The first few months we were doing fine. We had a routine. He and I would go to work together since the company he worked at wasn't too far from mine and come back together sometimes. There were times when I had company dinners or nights out with my colleagues. Nothing too serious. Just a fun night out and I'm back home. There were nights I would try and include him in these activities, but he was always busy trying to work on his game since he had an investor. I felt like he was overworking himself and spoke to him about maybe resigning from the company since he was making money from his game, but he always had an excuse or a reason not to quit. We must have been living together for about 5 months when Malcolm became more snoopy than normal. I would catch him going through my purse and demand an explanation only to hear him say something like unreasonable about how we saw a male coworker dropping me off last night. I knew he wasn't the insecure type, he knew most of the people I worked with and didn't have any problems with them, so to hear him saying things like that just made me angry because something else was going on. I didn't want to say anything to anyone because I believed it was just a phase. But then Agnes came clean to me about Malcolm being a bit more hostile at work, and generally different at his workplace. I noticed the changes also and wondered what could be going on. There have been several times when he would suddenly cut his call when I entered the room. It was starting to become a bother. A few days later, I received an anonymous message for someone asking me to meet. At first, I thought it was a spam message, but then it occurred to me that it could be real and decided to check it out. I typed back and set up a meeting with the anonymous person at a restaurant not too far away from work. I got to the restaurant the next day and saw a woman who wore sunglasses and a cap. It was so funny how, at the time, I contemplated leaving the restaurant but something urged me to keep on. I sat down opposite this lady. She removed her sunglasses and I saw an utterly broken woman sitting in front of me. You could tell that she must have been through a terrible ordeal. She took my hands in hers and told me the most shocking news ever about Malcolm. Turns out he was a scammer who stole majorly from women. He had the same pattern. He pretends like he was in a new city, lies his way into the woman's life before getting all the necessary statements of her account and stealing her money. And she had been one of his victims. At first, I found it hard to believe because it wasn't like I was swimming in millions. Then the lady, Christine, asked about my occupation, and it became clear to me that Malcolm wasn't just after my money, he was after the bank's money, and things started making more sense. His constant snooping into my bag was to get something. The lady explained to me that she was from Chicago. 
She and Malcolm met online about a year ago where they chatted often. They became so close she asked him to come over six months ago when he told her he had no place to stay but wanted to relocate to Chicago. She never thought he could be a scammer and slowly let her guard down around him without bothering to hide any of her personal statements, which he got access to and emptied her account. It became clear to me that all the trips and investors were all lies. Things were getting clearer, his empty apartments and his game concept were all lies. It then occurred to me that I was his next target. He must have been planning something bad like trying to get access to the bank information which if he did meant I wasn't safe. I made a call to the police immediately and had him arrested despite Christine's objection saying she had a plan. I couldn't afford to lose my job and get drowned in debt. The case was a long one since there was no physical evidence against Malcolm, but I made sure Christine and I dragged it to the end until he was found guilty. Turns out he and his friends were major scammers online who used their gaming platform to cover their tracks. I didn't know how he did it, but apparently he had gotten the necessary documents and information needed to access my client's account, but he was biding his time. It has been years now, but anytime I remember the incident, I always feel grateful to Christine who gave me a heads up, or I don't know what would have become of me. First of all, and I really don't know why, but I feel like this gaming platform as OP describes it, why would I just not be surprised if it turned out to be Roblox? I don't know why, but that just sticks in my head. It seems like anything scam or illegal and the words gaming platform equal Roblox. Second of all, I just want to know how Christine got a hold of OP. Like, how did they get their number and say, meet me up at this restaurant, look for the lady in the sunglasses? Like, I'm glad it worked out, but how did you find out? Like, Facebook or something? That said, our next story is, my fiancé played me. I'm a 21-year-old who only wanted to excel academically while in college. I didn't think I planned to have any relationships with the opposite sex in college because I believed that it would be a huge distraction for me. So ultimately, I decided to stay away from any friendships or discussions that could lead me down that path. A path I was certain I didn't want to thread. One summer, while in my sophomore year of college, I got enmeshed in a particular group of people to carry out a class project. It was my favorite course, and everything about the project seemed to have my attention. I was in a group of four students, of which three were females and the remaining were males. Amidst the fun and thrills, it was easy for some of us to bond easily. Someone like me bonded so fast with one of the guys in the group. This guy and I were given similar tasks, so it was easy for us to bond. I hate to use the word bond right now, but that was what I felt. I was surprised at the way this guy, let's call him P, grew so much on me. I hated that I felt that way, but I honestly couldn't help it. Let me give you a background story about his personality. P was literally the most vibrant person you would ever meet in a room. I mean, he had a way of showing off his charms, warmth, and very distinct personality. Let me also add that he had a bass voice that could make a stiff head turn no matter what. When we started getting closer, you know that level of closeness that makes you feel warm? I intentionally told him if he was considering having me as his girl, he should miss me with it. To my amazement, he laughed it all off when I told him that. He told me right there that he wasn't coming for friendship or some frivolous engagement. He said, and I quote, I am going to marry you. The only response I gave was a deep belly laugh because I couldn't help it. I can't say exactly when we started dating, but I know that after the class project, we became almost inseparable. I loved every moment of it, in spite of myself, I must say. Although I had worried that I was going to be distracted from my studies because I'd always believed that that was why I stayed away from any romantic relationships in the first place. Thankfully, P was the kind of guy who loved to study. According to him, he promised his mother a great result and he said he wanted to fulfill that promise no matter what. We had reading dates a couple of times, and I must say that it was usually worth it every single time. He was one of the brightest brains in our class, and I made sure to utilize every chance I got to learn from him. You know, I began to wonder why I hadn't gotten close to P earlier than I did. I remember moments that made my heart grow fonder. One of such moments was when some girls were trying to embarrass me because of P. You know, part of P's qualities is how endearing he could be to ladies. Usually I'd see how girls buzzed around him like bees and how he was made to feel like a prince charming, so it was a big blow for many of these girls when they learned that P and I were items. At first, I carried on like I didn't know it was a big deal for some of these girls to see me all loved up with P. 
I became a target for subtle bullying, and I could see that most of those girls began to avoid me in every way they could. To them, a reserved girl like me didn't deserve to have a guy like P. When P saw what was happening, he decided to give me a promise ring one day in class. It was the most surreal moment for me, and I couldn't believe P meant it when he said he was going to marry me. He believed his promise ring would shut other girls up. On the other hand, I was so excited that I posted it on all my social media handles. I felt truly special and blessed. Officially, I got engaged to P with the promise ring, hoping to get a real engagement ring when we're both ready in the future. We grew so much into each other all through our college days, and we were almost inseparable. All the girls who were against our relationship soon learned to accept that P and I wouldn't be giving up on each other no matter what they felt. One summer holiday, out of the blues, P told me he wanted me to meet his family. Actually, what he did was plan a surprise visit that got me so emotional. Being a shy person, I didn't know if I was ready to meet his folks. Well, I decided to do so regardless of my own shyness. In all honesty, I feared what would happen if they objected to our relationship. I'm from a humble home, while P, on the other hand, is from a wealthy home. He had told me how his parents had tried to fix him up with a girl who they felt was within his league and how they'd objected to other relationships that didn't involve some rich girls or so. I was scared because I knew I wasn't a rich girl, even though I'd been told at different times that I exuded class and poise. I think that was a quality that endeared me to P in the first place. He used to tell me how much he liked my carriage and how much he admired my dress sense. I would blush whenever he said that. It was my mama who taught me everything I knew. I learned a lot from my mama. She is one person who never allowed her financial resources to make her appear shabby or unkempt. I even remember how some of her rich friends used to seek her advice for their choice of dresses and outfits for different occasions. Everyone used to say that those qualities were expected of her because she was a fashion designer. Well, I think that she exuded so much grace in class, not because of her profession, but because she was a woman who paid great attention to details. I remember how detailed she was with every little thing in our home, from the kettle for preparing coffee, to the table covers, to the carpets around the house. Everything was bought with so much detailing and equally preserved with love. So I was used to thinking that I didn't have to break the bank to appear like a rich kid. Eventually, a lot of people didn't remember that I wasn't a rich kid. Although, for a long time, I didn't care so much about how people saw me or their perception of my family background. So I was surprised at myself for the fear of not being accepted by P's folks. I hated it so much that I allowed myself to fall so deeply in love with P that I feared what I would do to myself if he ever called it quits. I had told myself over and over again that I would never allow my happiness to be dictated by someone other than myself, and I tried to stick by that mantra until I began to let my guard down. Over at P's family's home, everyone acted cool and warm towards me. I was made to feel at home, and I don't know if I would be telling the truth if I said that I got a near princess-like treatment. I saw acceptance on their faces, and for some weird reasons which I hated to admit, I felt a leap of joy in my heart. My stay came to an end, and both P and I were extremely grateful for a lovely stay. I went home with so much happiness, hoping to recount to my mama all my experiences in P's home and estates. It was hilarious when I imagined myself as a future Mrs. P who would experience real luxury living and wear fancier clothes. I couldn't wait to see what the future held. After summer, I resumed school, hoping to be met by a loving and graceful boyfriend. But I was a bit surprised that he acted slightly cold towards me. I didn't know why and I honestly didn't ask why. I attributed his behavior to the fact that he missed his folks and maybe didn't want to leave them. That was a flimsy excuse on my part, but I guess that made me feel better. After the first month of resumption, I noticed that P was beginning to pass the vibe check once again. It was a relief for me because I was worried about how we were beginning to fall apart when I thought we were even just getting started. One day, I got a call from P to pack my bags. He had booked a reservation for us at one of the most beautiful resorts in Princeton. He told me he wanted us to have the coziest weekend ever, and I believed him. We rode together in a perfect symphony of joy and love, and our hearts, I guess, beat together as one. As I stole several glances at him as he drove, I wondered how luckier I could get. I got a man when I wasn't even seeking any, and I was grateful that he had shown me nothing but devotion, commitment, love, and care. I loved how he made me intensify my desire to have a family. 
When we arrived at our destination and we both jumped on our beds with excitement, I knew what I felt for P was beyond the wealth and glamour or even the looks. With him, I could see a future full of roses and bright petals. That night, after our sightseeing and fun, P and I made love for the first time. As I yielded to his touch, I was sure of who I wanted by my side in the future. Well, if only I knew that there was no future between us, I would have been careful with what I wished for. One and a half years after that amazing experience at that resort, I got the news that P was tying the knot with some girl. I laughed it off heartily when a friend broke the news to me with the emphasis that P was having a private wedding. I couldn't believe it because P and I were still a couple and he never told me he was breaking up or anything. Out of curiosity, I called P to confirm the worst news of my life for a very long time. P told me he was sorry and that he didn't know how to tell me that his family insisted that he get married to someone else. I asked him if he insisted on us, but his silence made me understand that I had been played. I had been played by the man who I felt was the perfect man for me. I knew I had no chance to hack the perfect revenge or anything, so I decided to do a little digging. I decided to do a little digging about the girl. Thankfully, she was within reach, so I carefully drafted an anonymous letter to her, warning her sternly not to get married to P on the supposed date. I dared her to go ahead and find out what it means to be disobedient. According to the news I got, P and his family tried all they could to convince the girl that there would not be any cause for alarm, but I guess the girl was too scared to disobey Miss Anonymous. The wedding was postponed for a long time, and I'm not sure if it was ever held. The one thing I'm kind of curious about is this letter popping up to this girl saying, don't go through with it, you won't want to find out what it means to be disobedient. If the girl had disclosed that letter with literally anybody, there really only could have been one person it came from, right? Unless this is the one time that the Nigerian prince with a billion dollars is actually real and they have some kind of vested interest in making sure P doesn't get married, it doesn't make any sense. Like surely they had to have known it had to be OP sending that letter. Maybe in all reality they got that letter and they realized, you know what, maybe this family in general just isn't worth it. I mean shoot it sounded like an arranged marriage anyways, maybe they just weren't into it to begin with. Maybe OP honestly gave them that one lifeline they needed to get out of there. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.